God judges us without any partiality. Whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, there is no partiality with God. This is our problem. We are new man on the inside, but we all struggle with our soul, with the wrong desires of the soul and the body. Now, whether you're a Christian for nine days or 90 years, as long as you have flesh, as long as you have mind and body, this is a problem. The key there is Romans 3.24 where he says, We are justified by faith freely by His grace. That is the good news. That God could declare us sinners justified. That is just as if we've never sinned. That God could do that for us freely by His grace because of the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So that he introduces that. That's the good news. That's the great news uh, for all of us. Then in chapter 4, he emphasizes the fact that we have been made righteous by faith and faith alone. That means we can't work our way into this. You can't be a really good person and attain righteousness because all our goodness doesn't match up to God. All we can do is by faith receive God's gift of righteousness. That's the emphasis of chapter 4. Chapter 5, he begins to say, now that we are standing righteous before God by grace, he says, here are all the wonderful things. We have peace with God. He says, what then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer in it? Romans 6 verse 2. So tell your neighbor, I'm dead to sin. So that's the position of the believer. As a believer, we are dead to sin. You say, but when did I die? Verse 3. Knowing this, that as many of us have been baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. He says, look, God did something. Now, when we were baptized into Christ, he's talking about, you know, water baptism. So water baptism is very important. I want to encourage you to do that. But it's not, water baptism is symbolic of a spiritual thing that God has done. What did God do? He immersed us into Christ. So when Jesus was being nailed to the cross, this old sinful nature that we received from Adam was nailed to the cross. What do we mean by nature? You can use modern terminology. You can say it's your DNA. The DNA of your spirit. That's nature. It's your predisposition. It's your inclination. That's nature. That old sinful nature. The old man refers to the old sinful nature. That was nailed to the cross. Paul makes this important thing. He says, you know, in the past you were a slave. Now, under grace, you're still a slave. So tell your neighbor, under law, you were a slave. Under grace, you're still a slave. Just that your master is different. So say this with me. Under grace, I'm a slave. I'm still a slave. But I'm a slave to God and to righteousness. Don't focus your attention on pleasing the desires of the unclean desires of your body and mind. Don't focus on it. Because he warns us there in Romans 8. He says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Then he says in verse 24, Galatians 5, 24, they that are Christ's, those who belong to Christ, they have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Isn't that wonderful? That by the Spirit, you can actually crucify those desires. Ungodly, I'm talking. We have good desires, enjoy it. Wrong desires, crucify it. But one thing you and I can be assured, there is no sin that can so dominate you which the Holy Spirit cannot get rid out of you. Because He is more powerful than any of these things. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and 